Now that the preparations are completed, it's time to get started on the work piece. Switch on the machine for the operation. The controller will boot. Bring the machine head to the zero position using the jogger. Reset the machine on this point using the control panel. The machine will use this as the starting point to cut the raw material. Check the commands in general for the machine operations including the emergency switch. In case of an accident, use this red color emergency switch to turn off the machine immediately. Proceed by checking the magazine of cutters. Ascertain that it is loaded with all the essential cutters and tools. Take a dummy run. At this point, you must also make a note of the magazine slot number assigned to each cutter. Verify the position of each cutter with respect to the part program. Before you lay down the workpiece, you must clear off the burrs and any debris build up. Remember, any residual burrs can affect the precision of your cut. Position the workpiece between the jaws of the wise. If required, use a packing to raise the level. It is important to provide an adequate amount of clearance. This allows the cutter to perform the operation without any obstruction. Clean the packing before you set it. Once you have cleaned the workpiece, rest it on top of the packing. Go on to secure the workpiece. Use a vise handle to tighten the wise jaws. Make use of a nylon hammer to facilitate clamping. Gradually tap the wise handle. Continue tapping until the workpiece is held firmly and cannot be moved by hand. The next step is to align the workpiece with respect to the X and Z axis. Place a poppy dial gauge with a holder on the spindle. Bring the workpiece into line with the spindle. Lower the machine head until the poppy dial gauge feeler touches the workpiece surface. Move the workpiece to see if the raw material is set straight. Move it slowly across the x-axis.
Look for needle movement on the dial, which indicates that the workpiece is not straight. You can even use a mirror to read the poppy dial gauge reading. If required, make the necessary adjustments to the wise or workpiece. Repeat this exercise for the z-axis. Ensure that the face of the workpiece is almost parallel to the corresponding axis. Once you are certain your setup is adequate, you can get started on the first operation. As per the sequence of operation, commence the surface milling operation. The tool changer will follow the part program and automatically pick up the appropriate cutter. Here, it has selected the surface milling cutter from the magazine and loaded it in the spindle. In order to cut accurately, you must first set the tool offset for the surface milling cutter. Slowly bring the surface milling cutter to touch the face of workpiece. Manually set the tool offset position in the controller. This will give the machine information about the tool tip location and ensure accurate cutting. The machine will signal out an alarm and display an error message if you set an incorrect tool offset. Here, the alarm message indicates that the operator overshot the possible set depth. In such a case, one must re-correct the offset setting and remove the error. Resume the program and initiate the surface milling operation. The part program ensures automatic flow of the coolant to avoid overheating of the cutting bits. You can also manually use the coolant if the cutter is burning up. The surfaced workpiece will look like this. Follow the sequence of operation and prepare for step cutting operation. The tool changer will automatically swap the surface milling cutter with the end mill cutter.
Proceeding ahead, set the tool offset position by manually bringing the end mill cutter to almost touch the workpiece. Then insert a piece of paper between the end mill cutter and the workpiece. Set this position in the controller as the tool offset. Resume the program and the machine will automatically start cutting the required periphery. This is how the workpiece appears in progress. This is how the workpiece looks post the first step cutting operation. Once again, resume the program. Let it run its course to perform the second step cutting operation. Earlier, the milling cutter had cut a rectangular step, but this time around, the end mill cutter will give workpiece a rectangular shape on one side and circular shape on the other side. You can see a dry run in progress for this step cutting operation. Now, the actual cutting is in progress. This is how the workpiece looks at this stage.
As you can see, two corners have been left out. Resume the program to shave the unwanted corners as per the design. Moving on to the slot cutting operation. Once again, the tool changer will automatically trade this end mill cutter with another end mill cutter of slightly smaller diameter. As you will notice, this end mill cutter in use is made of high speed steel in contrast to the previously used end mill cutter that had carbide bits. Remember to set the tool offset every time the cutter is changed. The machine will automatically cut the slot as per the required dimensions. This is how the workpiece appears once the machine makes the recommended incisions. Since the engineering drawing demands a bore in the workpiece, you will first have to perform the center drilling operation followed by the drilling operation. The tool changer will trade the end mill cutter with the center drill. Consequently, the drilled hole will guide the cutter to bore the required hole. Set the tool offset for the center drilling operation. Allow the machine to drill the requisite pilot hole. Now go on to perform the drilling operation using a twist drill. The machine will by design drill a hole large enough to accommodate the cutter used for the boring operation. The tool change will take place for the boring operation. Here, 
We have used the same end mill cutter that we employed for the slot cutting operation. Therefore, no offset setting is required. Once the machine has the end mill cutter in place, it will automatically perform the boring operation. Once all the operations are complete, remove the workpiece. Use the vise handle to loosen the vise jaws. Tapping the vise handle with the nylon hammer will help you loosen the vise grip. Take time to assure that the dimensions are correct. Use a vernier caliper to cross-check the dimensions with respect to the engineering drawing. Here's a recap of the broad steps you need to perform to complete the component. Step 1. Switch on the machine. Step 2. Set the home position. Step 3. Check the magazine. Step 4. Set the workpiece. Step 5. Align the workpiece. Step 6. Perform the surface milling operation. Step 7. Set the tool offset. Step 8. Perform the first step cutting operation. Step 9. Set the tool offset. Step 10. Perform the second step cutting operation. Step 11. Perform the slot milling operation. Step 12. Set the tool offset. Step 13. Perform the center drilling operation. Step 14. Set the tool offset. Step 15. Perform the drilling operation. Step 16. Perform the boring operation. Step 17. Remove the workpiece. Step 18. Cross-check the dimensions. 